Okay, everyone, let's begin. So, uh, this is a basic tutorial on adding fractions and using <clears throat> common denominators. Uh, apologize if it's not uh, as loud as it normally is, but uh, I'm not using my uh, headset this time. <clears throat> just uh, just the microphone on the laptop. So, so backing up, the basics is that the only way you can add two fractions without really doing anything is if the two denominators are the same. So right here I have a 4 and a 4. They're exactly the same, right? So that means I can add them without doing anything. So I just add the top, which is 5, and it's going to be over 4. So we don't add these two numbers together. They just stay the same. So the fraction, the, the answer is still uh, a fourth, right? It's still 5 over 4. But um, you don't have to do any manipulation to this. You don't have to find any common denominators because you already have two common denominators, okay? So the bulk of what I want to talk about is what happens when those two denominators are different. And sometimes I think that's where <clears throat> our problem lies. So for example, if I have, uh, keep it really simple, if I have 1 half plus 1 third equals, okay, uh, I can't add these two because they're not the same, right? The only, in order to add fractions or subtract fractions, both denominators, both the numbers on the bottom have to be the same, okay? And right now they're not. So we have to come up with a common denominator, which means we have to come up with the denominator that can be the same for both these fractions. So what we can do is, one way is just to multiply them together, okay? And that does work in, in a lot of cases, but sometimes the number gets a little too big, so I'll show you after. But So if we multiply these two together, 2 times 3, then that means our common denominator will be 6, right? 6 and 6. Now, how we got that is over here, we multiplied the 2 times 3, right? So if we multiply the bottom times 3, we have to multiply the top times 3. That's just the rule, okay? So then it's 3 times 1, which is 3. Uh, you know what? This equal sign isn't very good. It doesn't look like an equal sign. Okay, there we go. Now, this one-third, how did we get it to something over 6? Well, we multiplied the 3 times 2, right, to get the 6, because we multiplied this 2 times 3. So 3 times 2 is 6. So if we multiply the bottom times 2, we have to multiply the top times 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Now we can add them together because the denominators are the same. Okay, so it's 3 plus 2 is 5. And the answer will be over 6, because that is our common denominator, right? Here they weren't the same, so we had to find equivalent fractions, find a common denominator, <clears throat> and then we can add them together, okay? Now, let's do a different example. And sometimes what will happen is when you try to multiply the two denominators together, the number can get very, very big. So, for example, if we do um, 2 over 9, let's say, plus uh, 3 over, oh, let's say, um, Ah, uh, let's say 27. That's pretty big. Okay. So, we can't add these together <clears throat> because they are different denominators. Okay? Can't happen. We have to find a denominator that can be the same for both. And one way to do that is to multiply the 9 times, the nine times 7. Right? And that's just a crazy big number okay 27 times 9 
that's 318, what is that around? 243, we're not going to use that number. We're not going to do 243 and 243. That That's just crazy, that's too big. All right, we want to find a common denominator. So one way to do it is do a little t-chart. All right, bring these, these two denominators down. There's the 9, and there's the 27. Okay, and here's what we do. So, put not another number line there to separate it. So these are the two numbers. These are these are our denominators, nine and twenty-seven. So what I want to do is I want to keep multiplying until I have two that match. One column, one and one, one and the other. So what I do is let's start times two. All right, nine times two is eighteen. 27 times 2 is still a big number, 54. Okay, I'm not going to, well, anyway, let's do the next one. Times 3, 3 times 9 is 27. Hey, look at, there's the 27, and there's a 27 in this side. So, there's our common denominator. That's what we're going to use, okay? So, let's go up here now. The 9... I multiplied by 3, right, to get 27. So, as I said, our common denominator is going to be 27, right, because we proved it right here. There's a 27, there's a 27, right? They're the same. So here we multiplied 9 times 3 to get 27. So we have to multiply the top times 3, and that's 6, right? This fraction... We already have 27. We don't have to do a thing to this fraction because it's already there, right? We don't. We haven't changed it a bit, so it's the same thing. Now we can add it together. Equals nine over 27. Okay. Let's uh, let's do a new one. So let's try. 3 over 6 plus 2 over 4. Okay, same thing. We can't add these together because they have to be, the denominators have to be the same to add them together. So what do we do? Well, uh, you want to find, now you want to find the smallest common denominator because it just makes it easier to work that way, or work with the numbers. We could multiply them together, 6 times 4, right? We could use, uh, we could use, so we could do 6 times 4 equals 24. We could use that as our common denominator. It's not too big of a number, but is there a smaller one, okay? You always want to try to find the smaller one, so let's find out. Let's do it this way. Let's do, let's do our 6 there and our 4 there. Those are our denominators. Right, I'll make my little T chart here, and then I'll just go like this. So we have our six and our four. Let's multiply them by two, because that's where we start, first by two. So six times two is 12, four times two is eight. Okay, I'm not seeing any similar numbers yet. Uh, let's do three, all right? Three times six is 18. And 3 times 4 is 12. Hey, there they are right there. There's a 12. There's a 12. That's our new common, that's our common denominator. Right? That's what both numbers have in common. 12 and 12. So we don't have to use 24. We can use one that's smaller. So let's go back up here. So to get, so we can actually put our common denominators over here. Because that's what we're going to use. So how did we get 12? Well, 6 times 2, right, multiplied by 2. Now we have to multiply the top by 2, because you have to do the same thing top and bottom. 3 times 2 is 6, right? And the 4, we multiplied by 3 to get 12, right? So we have to multiply by 3. Now the top, we have to multiply 3 as well. 2 times 3 is 6. Yeah, both the same. So that equals 6 plus 6 is 12. And it's actually over 12. 12 over 12. There's our fraction. That's our answer. 
But we also know that any number over itself is 1, because 12 divided by 12 is 1. Okay, let's do one more. Let's just clear it. I'm using my Braining Camp screen here. So let's do another one. Let's say 3 over 5 plus uh, 7 over, oh, let's say 8 equals. Okay, and we're trying to find a common denominator because we can't add these together. All right, we could we could multiply them and have um, eight times five is forty as our common denominator. Right, we could do eight times five is forty. That's a simple way to do it. But I guess is there a smaller one? Let's find out. So five, eight. I may not be. All right. So let's see. So let's do times two. Let's do first. It's 10, 16, times 3 is 15, 24, not seeing anything yet, times 4 uh, is 20, 4 times 8, 32, and uh, nope, nothing common here yet times 5, 25, and 40, <clears throat> times 6 is 30, and 48, I think 40 might be our best bet here, times 7, looks like it, that's 35, 50, Six times eight. Eight times five is forty. Oh, there, there it is. So that is our lowest common denominator. Forty and forty, right? Five times eight, and eight times five. So five times eight. There we go. So to get the forty, we multiplied this five times eight. So we have to multiply the top times eight. So 8 times 3 is 24. And over here, we multiply the 8 times 5 to get 40. Right? So we have to multiply the top times 5, which gives us 35 equals. That is 59 over 40. Right? It's over 40, not over 80, it's over 40. That fraction, the denominator stays the same. From that fraction to that fraction to the answer. It always stays the same. It's always the same denominator all the way through. Okay? So basically, when we're adding fractions or subtracting fractions, you have to have the same denominator in order for it to work. And if it doesn't have the same denominator, we have to find a common denominator and add them or subtract them after. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Have a look at this a couple times maybe, and then uh, try some of the questions that were assigned and see how you make out. You can always go back over this again to take a look and see how we did it. Okay.